here's the program. I'm going to run through it. This is the uh, D64 image for the program that I'll be putting on the website. Program. <coughs> the program is going to uh, check for radio connectivity and it's also going to check to see if the calibration file exists. And I will back up the calibration because one does not yet exist. I will also show you what a calibration sheet looks like because I'm not going to spend two minutes printing it in a video. It looks like that. Calibration settings, all with the regular decimal values that can be plugged into the radio. When it's finished, it asks if I want to print calibration. Uh, you would have a printer set to device 4. In this case, we're not going to print it, we're just going to continue. When the program loads, it will show you, and if you have more than one radio, you'll know if, if which one you're using because in green on the top it will show the uh, call sign of the radio that's in your CWID setting. It can hold uh, seven characters. I differentiate this one with zero so I know the difference between this one and my other one with the call sign. You can see it shows the VFO, the band, the frequency, the S meter uh, um, slash SWR meter as well as squelch, the current power setting, and if it's in uh, receiver transmit, I know there's a little glare right there. There's nothing I can do about that. The toggle settings are in purple, so if I wanted to turn the noise block on, I would simply hit N, and then it would be on, and I could hit N again and shut it off. This, this is also for uh, AGC, Vox, the break-in, fast tuning, Split transmit receive, RF gain or squelch, dual watch, keyer, uh, CW paddle, reverse or normal, CWID, and the scan mode to scan up and down the bands or off, which it currently is. These are the functions that could also be done uh, on the um, on the handset in the MH31. Some other things include changing frequency. So if I want to go to 147.100, I could just hit F1. It'll ask for a frequency, and I have to type in all eight digits, even if it has a leading zero. So I go 147, triple zero, and it fills in the decimals for you. And there you are at 147, triple zero. I could also change bands via the frequency. That works as well. So I could change the frequency to 14070 or 14025. So 0140 and now we're at the 20 meter band at 14025. Obviously, the mode FM would be inappropriate for this band. So I could actually go to CW. And that would that would be an appropriate mode for this frequency. If I go back to 14070, so actually 147.120. We'll do that now. Back on two meters. I do have to change the mode though. Back on FM. If we toggle the VFO, we could see our, our other VFO, VFOB. I hit F5. And you can see F5 happens to be sitting at 14025. I happen to use that frequency uh, for testing. Set for CW. We come back to our VFO A right here. And now I want to copy A to B so that A and B are identical. Right now I have it on 147, 119, 20, and that offset was caused by the, the change of mode. I'll make it 147, 120 right quick. 147, 12000. Now I'm going to copy A to B. So whatever's in B will be gone. I'm going to do Shift F1, which is F2, and it'll ask me if I'm sure. So I'll hit Yes. So it tells me to wait, not touch the radio. It's completed. 
I can see I, I still have two extra exclamation points that I have to work out of there, but that's fine. Now if I toggle my VFO right here, you can see the VFO B matches VFO A. It also matched the band. It includes the tone, the squelch, the frequencies. It's, it's an entire, it's a mirror copy of A to B. So just like the functionality on the radio does that, you can also have that in the program simply by hitting F2. Uh, just to go through everything, F6 shows the help. And I hit F6, the help will load, and I have a help screen. There isn't a whole lot to talk about, but I figured, why not? There's my help screen. When you hit space, it'll go back again. This time it'll find the calibration file that we made, so it won't pull us to do it again. And I added another feature. And this feature uh, allows you to check the calibration of the current radio against the one stored on disk to make sure that none of the settings have changed and become corrupted. And to do that, I hit F8. The program's gonna load. And it's going to basically download the calibration and it's going to check it against the one on disk and let you know if it's good or bad. Hmm. And there you go, you can see the calibration is passed and it gives you the option again to print the calibration. So if you wanted to print a good calibration, this would be uh, a good way of doing it. I'm gonna hit no. It'll take us back to our main program again. The other thing is the ability to toggle power. If you look at F7, you'll see that you can toggle the power. And that doesn't necessarily mean your transmit power, because if your SWR is high, you're not going to transmit at high power. But I'll hit F7, and you can see it goes to low 3, low 2, low 1 and back up to high. Also, I put a function in, because I use it quite often, is um, is F4, is to turn the charger on or off. So if you have the battery that you want to charge, you can just hit F4, and you can see the charger turned on, as well as on the radio, and allows the battery to charge. So this is the program. I was able to come full circle and, and find a good end for it. Uh, go through some troubleshooting like I said I, I have to add those remove those two exclamation points other than that um, I'll just show you that the radio does while I don't support it it does work on memory mode and I'm going to change it to memory and if you change it to memory all of the things that are done obviously there's no copy A to B because these aren't VFOs but if I go to different memory locations it will be reflected. The settings still work for them. I'll put it back on, on VFO. So that's the program. I'm done. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching the video.